Welcome. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about instantaneous velocity and acceleration. And here's what we already know. We already know. Uh, here's our position versus time graph here. And if we look at point P, and we want to find the average velocity of the object between point P and this point, call it point 3, then we take this line right here called the secant line, find the slope, and that gives us the average velocity. Well, look what happens when we decrease our time intervals from delta t3 to delta t2. The slope of our secant line gets steeper. And we decrease the time interval again to delta t1 here, and the slope of our secant line gets steeper. So the question that we have here is how do we find the instantaneous velocity, the velocity of the object at point p? We don't want an average here. We don't want to find the slope of a line between two points. We want to find the slope of the line at point P. And this is called the tangent line. So if we can find the slope of the tangent line, which is this blue line right here at point P, that will give us the instantaneous velocity at that point. Now, this is going to require calculus for us later on. But for right now, here's how I want you to imagine it. Imagine that you're on an iPad or your phone and that you zoom in on this curve, this orange curve right here, really close to point P. If you zoom in far enough, then that curve at that point is going to look like a straight line. And if we draw that straight line and we find the slope of that straight line, we are finding the slope of the tangent line. So for right now, what we need to know is that the slope of the tangent line is equal to the instantaneous velocity at that point. And the instantaneous velocity is just v. There's no average. It's just v. So we're finding the velocity of the tangent line at that point p, uh, at time t sub p, as we see down here. Okay. So for right now, mathematically, we're not going to worry about finding that tangent line. Uh, we're going to just look at approximating what that, the slope of that tangent line is going to be. And the other thing we're going to look at in this lecture is acceleration. And what we see here in this graph is, if we look at the slope of the tangent line at point P, we've got that slope there. But look at the slope of the tangent line here at this point, point 2. If we draw it in, what it looks like, wow, it looks like a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have a slope of 0, which means that the instantaneous velocity at that point is 0. Look at the slope of the tangent line here at point 3. It's negative, which means that the velocity, which is a vector, remember, can be positive or negative, which means moving to the right or moving to the left. The velocity here is negative. So the object now has somehow turned around and is moving to the left. The tangent line over here at point P has a positive slope, a positive velocity. So we have a changing velocity along this curved line for the position versus time changing velocity we're going to find is the acceleration. And that's what we're going to look at as well in this lecture. So here we have a position versus time graph, position on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis. And the orange line represents the position of the particle at any time. So here at time 0, what we can see is that the position is like 0.75 meters. Here at time 1, the position is about 1.75 meters. Now, the curving line tells us that the slopes, the instantaneous, or the, sorry, the slopes of the tangent lines are changing all the way along this curve, which tells us that the instantaneous velocity is changing all the way along this curve. And let's say we wanted to approximate what the instantaneous velocity is right here at time t equals 1.8 seconds. Well, we could sketch in a tangent line. And as we see, we've included this and gone all the way up here. And now we can find the slope of that tangent line by doing the rise over the run. So our rise here, we go from 
eight and a half, sorry, from four all the way up to eight and a half. So this is our delta x right there, um, from here all the way down to here. And our run, let's see, we're going here, we're starting here at about 1.8 seconds, and we're going all the way over here to five seconds. So this is our t, or delta t if you prefer. So we can approximate the instantaneous velocity here, remembering the equation is, sorry, uh, this is instantaneous velocity, so we need to get rid of that little bar. The velocity, with no bar over the top, is equal to delta x over t, the slope of that tangent line. So the slope of our tangent line is 8.5 minus 4. That's the rise over the run. Let's call it five, 2 to 5. So 5 minus 2 is our run. So 8.5 minus 4 gives us 4.5, and that's going to be meters divided by 3 seconds. Throwing that into the calculator, we've got 1.5 meters per second. That would be our instantaneous velocity at two seconds for this particle. All right? Uh, for the time being, that's how we're going to calculate or think about instantaneous velocities. Um, when we get further on, we're going to use some calculus to actually find precisely, if we know the equation of this orange line, then we can take what's called a derivative to find the slope of the tangent line. But for right now, the slope of the tangent line gives you the instantaneous velocity, and we're looking at approximations. Okay, here we have, uh, again, a position versus time graph, position on the vertical, time on the horizontal. And the orange line represents the position of the particle at any time t. And what we can see here is at t1, we have a nice little tangent line right here. At t2, they've drawn it in again for us there. And at t3, they've drawn it in again for us here. And what we can see is that the slopes are increasing. The slope of the tangent line at t2 is greater than at t1. The slope of the tangent line at t3 is greater than at t2. So that means that velocity is changing. Velocity, in this case, is increasing. And when velocity is increasing, we're talking about something going faster and faster and faster. And we know from experience this is called acceleration. This is a change in velocity over time. So that is the actual definition of acceleration. And first off, just like we did for velocity, we're going to look at what the average acceleration is. Mathematically, it's defined as the change in velocity over time. And we remember that velocity is a vector. And so is the change in velocity, v final minus v initial. So let's write that out a little bit more explicitly. v final minus v initial all over time. Because anytime we see change, it's final minus initial. Uh, let's take a look at the unit here. The unit for the top part of our fraction is meters per second. That was the standard unit for velocity. And the unit for the bottom time is seconds. So when we put this in, we get meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. That is the standard unit. Uh, so when we talk about an acceleration, we talk about something whose velocity is changing by a certain amount every amount of time. So it's changing by a certain of meters per second per second. All right. And now we can obviously manipulate this equation right here, this acceleration equation, and we can multiply both sides by time, and we could get an expression that will give us the change in velocity. If we multiply by time, divide by acceleration, we can give us an expression that gives us the velocity. Uh, um, sorry, an expression that gives us the time. So just like the average velocity equation, algebra will let us manipulate that to find out information depending on what we're given and what we're asked to find. All right, so let's look at an example here. Uh, I have a graph. This time, it's velocity versus time. And I want to put some numbers in on this graph. Let's say that the initial velocity, and this notation, v naught sub x, that's the initial velocity in the x direction. And let's go ahead and just say this is 4 meters per second. And let's say that this is v final in the x direction. And this is 8 meters per second. And let's say that we start at t equals 0, and we end up down here at t equals 8 
seconds. So let's do a quick math. The average acceleration over this time period is the change in velocity, v final minus v initial, all over the time. So the v final was 8, the v initial was 4, and the time was 8. And on top it was meters, on bottom it was seconds. So doing the math here, we've got 4 over 8, which gives us a half, or 0 0.5 meters per second. Sorry, the unit on top here was meters per second, and that gives us meters per second squared. So 0 0.5 meters per second squared is the acceleration. Now, I want to show you what we just did there as well, if we clear off what we just wrote on there. We took v naught and v final. This is delta v right there, and we did the time on the bottom there. So we did the rise over the run. And rise over run, we've got the slope. So this is another key understanding. The slope of a velocity versus time graph equals the acceleration. The slope of a position versus time graph gave us the velocity. All right, so now the slope of a velocity versus time graph gives us acceleration. We need to be very careful when we're looking at a graph to see what our vertical axis is. Is it velocity? Is it position? So now again, looking at a different graph, we still have a graph of velocity versus time. Um, but here we see that the velocity versus time graph is a horizontal line on the top uh, and on the bottom. So we have a positive constant velocity. This velocity is not changing. It's above the t-axis here, which means it's a positive velocity, a positive constant velocity. Now take a look at this triangle here. Uh, we have t1 and t2. And the area underneath that triangle, what if we calculated it? What if we found what it is? To find the area of a triangle, we just do length times width. The length here is delta t, and the width is just v naught, or just v. So if we multiply those two together, v times t, what do we get? You got to go back and remember that the average velocity equation was delta x over time, the displacement divided by the time. So if we multiply both sides by t, we've got v times t is equal to delta x. So the area under the curve will give us the displacement. And since this area, as shown here, is positive, because the v naught is positive, we have a positive displacement, which means moving to the right, or moved to the right. And down here, we can see that we've got our velocity is negative. This thing is moving to the left. And so it gives us a negative area between the curve and the t-axis. And that means that the displacement is negative. It moved to the left from where it started. So here's another key understanding. The area beneath a v versus t graph gives displacement. So these graphs alone can give us a ton of information about the motion of an object. Just by looking at this top graph, top graph I can tell you that the velocity is constant, the slope of a velocity versus time graph gives us the acceleration, the slope of that orange line is zero. The acceleration is zero. There is no acceleration. It's not speeding up. It's not slowing down. Not only that, I can calculate the displacement of the object between times t1 and t2 just by looking at the area. This, again, involves calculus. If we have a curved line, it's not easy to find the area under the curve. You can't do it geometrically. So we, again, are going to need calculus to do this. We're going to get there in time. But for right now, if it's a geometric graph, if it's a triangle, if it's a rectangle, if it's a rhombus, you can find the area underneath it, and you can find the displacement. 
One final thing I'm going to leave you with, and this is your question. All right, so here I've got a V versus T graph. So velocity versus time. And on this V versus T graph, our graph looks like this. Here's V naught. And all the way over here is V final. What is going on with this object? This graph describes the motion of, the, of an object. Can you tell me, can you give me a real world scenario or just explain what the motion of this object is? What is its acceleration, if any? How is it moving to the right, to the left? Is it speeding up? Is it slowing down? Describe the motion that this graph represents. See you soon.